Hi, this is Jeff Chow again. So the last part of this lab asks you to commit your work to the GitHub repository that you created to save your changes to the Lab 3 project. Um, and we really do want you to do this this time. Getting familiar with GitHub and understanding how to use Git is a really important skill that you will uh, very, very much appreciate uh, in later classes, in industry, and throughout the rest of your life as a software developer and computer scientist. So this is something that we're going to just start giving you some practice with the labs. The assignments will continue to use Subversion, but in the labs we're going to try to use Git and GitHub and just give you some practice going through that workflow. All right, so the process of committing changes to a Git project is quite similar to uh, a Subversion project, but there are some important differences. So the first thing I need is to be at a point in my project where I have some information that I'd like to commit. So I created a new class in the Lab 3 project called Web Scraper, and I added some content to it, and I've just got a simple Hello World working. So I've got some changes that I'm happy with. I want to commit them so I don't lose them. So I start by going over here to the project, uh, right click team and choose the commit dialog. And this opens up a dialog that's a little bit different than the one that you're used to seeing with Subversion. Um, here, so there's the important part over here on the left. Now, Git's commit process is a little bit more sophisticated than Subversion. So in Git, I can actually choose which files I want to commit as part of a particular commit. So if I have three changes to different files in my repository, I actually don't have to commit all of them at once. I can create two commits. One of them has two of the changes. The other one has one. I can uh, ignore changes to one file and uh, commit changes to the others. So I have more flexibility here. This is something that's actually really useful when you're doing uh, software development because frequently you know you might have two unrelated changes to two files in your repository and you want to commit them separately so that you can attach different commit messages to them um, and for other reasons that will become more clear as you use version control. So in this case what the dialog is saying is that I have unstaged changes to webscraper.java. This means that these are changes that are not yet part of the commit. So if I tried to commit right now and I'm not sure it would let me, there are no changes to the project. What I need to do is I need to move these down to the staged changes area. There's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, one way is I can just drag them. Um, the other way is I can use this dialog over here where I can select. Um, I guess this is a sorting dialog actually. Okay, never mind. So I can just drag them into this box down here. So now I have a stage change. And what this means is that this is a change that's going to be part of the commit. So this commit is going to include the changes to webscraper.java. And that's exactly what I want. Um, so I'm going to write as usual, a nice commit message over here, getting started with lab three. Now there are two options in the dialog down here, commit and push and commit. And for now, in the future, commit and push is a quite useful um, option. But for now, I just want to do a commit because I want to point out an important and significant difference between Git and Subversion um, that is confusing for people at the beginning. So let me uh, do a commit. So the first thing I want you to notice is that uh, that finishes extremely quickly, okay? So that's done, um, and now that change is committed. And you can see over here in the, in the Package Explorer view, um, the icon here is a little bit different. Before there was a question mark, uh, because Git didn't know about this file, and now uh, it's saying that, that everything is okay. So that's good. Now, let's say I go over here. This is my Lab 3 project. Um, I'm going to refresh it. And on GitHub, this is the project that I forked from our starter project. And I go over here into source main Java and oh my gosh, what happened? I don't see my changes. So unlike Subversion, Git actually maintains a separate repository on your local machine. So when you commit, you're only committing to that repository. And this has many, many different advantages that I'm not going to go into in, in detail right now. Um, but it does mean that there are two steps to getting your changes to GitHub. First, you have to commit them to your own local repository. And the next step is to push those changes to the remote repository that you've configured. So what I've done is just one part of that. I've committed those changes locally. I have not pushed them. And if you look over here, uh, Eclipse actually gives me a little bit of an indicator here that this is the case. So you can see it says Lab 3 Master, there's an up arrow and a 1. And what that means is that there's one change in my local repository that I have not yet pushed to the remote repository. And that's the change to webscraper.java. So how do I get that up there? Let's go through that process. So 
I right click on the project again, I go to team and unlike subversion, there's this new set of options here about pushing and pulling. And that has to do with synchronizing the content with my remote repository. So the option I want to choose here is called push to upstream. It's going to open up a dialogue asking for my password, which I'm going to retrieve from my LastPass vault. Always use strong passwords. Okay. Here's my password and I'm going to hit okay. And you'll see there's some progress here. And when it's done, it says, okay. So now if I go back to GitHub, and I refresh my project page, you'll see there's a couple things that are different. First of all, the commit message is here. So this is the one that I wrote on that commit that I made a few minutes ago, getting started with lab three. So that's great. Um, and if I browse into the source main Java directory, uh, webscraper.java is here, and it has the contents that I've added to it. Um, so that is the process of, of getting things uh, to GitHub. Now, if I wanted to make another change to this, um, the, let's walk through the process again. So now I have a change uh, to my um, local repository. I can go here, go to team, commit. Um, so you'll see now it has a staged change. So now the change I made is, is already here and ready to go. Um, if I wanted not to commit this, I could move it back into the unstaged change area, but I do want to commit it. So I'm going to put it here, uh, change to welcome message hit commit and push. And now it's going to ask me for my password again. Maybe I'm lucky and it's still in my paste bin. It is. And I'm done. I get this nice message. Um, I go back to GitHub. I refresh. I see my latest commit message changed to welcome message. And in source main Java, I see my new welcome message. So that's all there is to it. Um, when you use the commit and push dialog, the process of uh, pushing uh, or committing to a re remote repository is pretty much identical uh, between Git and Subversion. Uh, but there is a pretty important and significant difference between the way that these two tools work under the hood. And that's something that you'll get more comfortable with in later classes as you begin to use Git more often.